Welcome back to Finger Lakes today. We are all still talking about the Keurig versus uh, versus just brewing your coffee. We, I feel like this needs to be addressed before we get into sports. Uh, Nate seems to think that Keurig, how do you pronounce it? Is it Keurig? Or I Keurig? say Keurig. I don't know if that's Keurig. right. He, I say Keurig. You don't love it because why? It's just not hot enough. First of all, it's not. I agree. And I don't think the quality of coffee out of a out of a Keurig or Keurig is is very good. Is good enough for me. A little bit of a snob when it comes to my coffee, but um, it's definitely good for convenience. You know, I live by myself too, so convenience. I why agree. are you gonna make a big pot of coffee just for one person, yeah. right? If you have just one cup, there's no point. Right, and that's why I have one cup in the it. I, I drink coffee at night too, so oh, no. I don't want. Do you drink decaf, Jim, or do you drink? Uh, no, regular. What time? Of, what time of night do you drink that? Uh, I'll brew one anytime between seven and nine p.m. Wow, no. and that doesn't keep you up at all, really. I, mean, I, no, I know you're. In, I, I mean, know you're I, late. You go to bed late anyway, but yeah, but I'm not going to bed late because I can't fall asleep. If I went to bed, I'd fall asleep. I just okay. for whatever reason get caught up watching or doing right. something, and next thing you know, it's. I usually go to bed around 12 30 a.m and fall asleep around one mm-hmm. by one o'clock i've been sleeping for two two and a half hours yeah i know it's a problem it's <laughs> sabers a problem. played at 10 30 last night they there and i didn't even didn't even try to make it to puck drop yeah no i <laughs> i mean i think that if i could some way f- how find my way to bed at 10 p.m i'd be asleep by 11 but i just that's don't. usually my goal i don't know that is a good goal yeah but yeah, well, whatever. It's been I've been a night owl my whole life, and then but usually in the summer, um, we get up real early to golf on the Play weekends, golf, right? and so that usually kicks my uh, internal clock of you know two, right. so I get to bed a little earlier. But I don't know. <laughs> I, I like being up at night. You know, when nobody else is up, is awake, everything slows down. It's mm-hmm. peaceful. Yeah. yeah, it is peaceful. Yes. I'm an early riser, though. I've always have been my whole life, so I'm sticking with that. I like both sides. I wish I only needed two two or three hours of sleep. That'd I'd like great. to stay up late and get up early. That would be the ideal. It would. I don't want to waste my life sleeping. Oh, That's goodness. Fair. But you need sleep to live. That's what they say. You can't what, get around What a dilemma, that. right? <laughs> right. So, so sports. Now that I've taken us completely off topic, we're going to circle back around to sports. Yeah, some good basketball games last night in the Wayne Finger Lakes League. We'll start on the girls' side. Uh, Miners traveled to Gananda to play that second game of the year against uh, the, the Warriors. The Blue and, Panthers. The Blue Panthers. I don't know yeah. why I said Warriors. And uh, Miners came out with a victory, 56-52, pretty close one over there in Gananda. Haley Mosh led the way for Miners. Gananda got 19 the points. Oh, is that what I, that's not what I said? I'm sorry. 56-52, yep, Gananda. Yeah, which was I was surprised. I thought Miners, the girls, were going to get that win um, and try to get a little momentum heading to sectionals where they'll be a top seed in B2. Um, but yeah, Ganada swept that season series. Yeah, Ganada's good. I mean, they're sixteen and four in the year. Yeah, uh, right up there in Wayne County. I think they just finished second to East Rochester for Wayne County girls, which we didn't have them in the mix. Right. It, we thought it was between Clyde Lions and ER. Right, and we didn't even was... really have. We had sort of had Lions in the mix, but I almost kind of thought it would be you know kind of ERs. Yeah, we real, ERs to lose. Even Clyde Savannah was a little bit of a, a distant thought to me i thought er would just kind of roll i agree the er anymore. in the end did did win the league right yeah, yeah. so but uh could get on to me one of the surprise teams of the season and again that minders is a finger lakes east team against a wayne county team generally um the east is stronger so it was i was really surprised to see Gananda sweep that season series. Uh, i'd also to play um out of league team twice the right. way they did home and home so. I'm interested to see what Miners does in sections. I think they got a really good chance in B2. Absolutely. Dan, just Dansville is, I think, number one, and I think Miners is number two behind them. I haven't looked at the standings in. A yeah, days, I just but. like wish like Miners had that close game against Palmac that went to overtime mm-hmm. after Palmac beat Waterloo. So obviously, you know, Miners is yeah they got the firepower capable, yeah. to beat a top team, um, but they're missing out on some momentum here heading into sectionals without getting that road win last night. But for Gananda, great feather in their cap, beat a Finger Lakes East team twice. And uh, so, you know, sectional time's almost here. We'll have brackets uh, by the weekend. Yeah, looking forward to that. So another non-league girls game last night, Waterloo took down Hornell over in Hornell by a score of 60 to 40. Uh, They they uh, have one more game on the season. They're 16-1 and one now as they move to that. So they have some momentum going into sectionals here. 
Um, let's take a look at the slate tonight. This is a big night. This Marcus might be the biggest Seneca, night. Yep. Biggest night of uh, of regular season on Wayne Finger Lakes basketball, especially Finger Lakes East. Right. Not as much for the girls, I don't think. No. But for, for the, the boys, boys, for sure, yes. So, yeah, Marks Women South Seneca, North Rose, Wolk at Lions as Lions looks to close out their, their Wayne I County season. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, let's talk about the boys. Um, we'll start with last night. Uh, Geneva Geneva played Miners. They Miners almost took down Geneva. Shocking. Miners, what, a three-win team? Three point, yep, three-win team, a three-point game at the end uh, over at Arthur L. Baker. Anthony Torres led the way for Geneva. He had 24. And uh, Jaden Ryko led the way for the Blue Devils. He had 22. Yeah, Jaden Ryko had a great game. I watched most of that game. I probably picked it up in the second quarter. Uh, Ryko made a big three late to kind of keep Miners in it. Um could see that Miners just didn't have the size or athleticism of Geneva. Uh, but you would expect Geneva, I would have put the line on that game at 15 or 16. So uh, Geneva, you know, we try to make predictions here inside our studio and on right. the Upstate Hoops podcast. And I really thought Geneva was a team that was going to get better as the year went on. Mm -hmm. But it kind of isn't the case. And for them just to sneak out that victory in, in Seneca Falls last night, was doesn't really bode well for them going into a tough B1 tournament. But for Minders, um, I still can't say that the three win Minders Blue Devils are going to have a shot in sectionals in B2. But right. I mean, they played with Geneva, they just couldn't close it out. They had a ball in the air that would have tied it and sent it to overtime off uh, Jake Prane. Um, it wasn't a great shot, but it did hit back iron. Um, it was a pretty exciting game, Seneca Falls, but in the end, Geneva got the win. Always good to be playing your, your best basketball this time of the year. Uh, Geneva looks to keep it going tonight. They're in Waterloo. So uh, a, a packed uh, Finger Lakes East slate. Uh, the game of the night, I think, in uh, the in the Finger Lakes East League. Uh, Geneva, or, or Wayne, Newark, excuse me. As oh, Newark yeah. has the Finger Lakes League League. They have 10 league wins. But Wayne can kind of join into that group, too. If they're able to take down and Newark. Newark's got Newark. one game lead on Wayne. Yep. So Wayne can be take a share of that title. And right. if Palmac wins against Whitman, where mm -hmm. you'll be calling that game tonight in Palmyra, it'll be a three-way right. uh, tie for the league championship. So Newark controls their own destiny. Yep, so they Newark beat wins, they win, it, they win it themselves. Right. right. But yep. if Wayne upsets Newark, as they did Palmac uh, Friday night, then all of a sudden – you need Palmyra Masson to beat Whitman at the game you'll be at, and yeah. we'd have a three-way co-champs. So there is a lot uh, at stake tonight, but the one thing to keep in mind is that Newark controls their own destiny, and they're at home, right? That game's in Newark? Yes, correct. Yeah, so um, they can clinch the league title tonight and also the top seed and be one. I'm pretty sure if they win tonight too. I think so, Bishop yeah. Carney was up there for a while, but I think, I think Newark's – Newark's uh, one seed if they win tonight. I like what Paul said yesterday on Upside Hoops. The Rose City on Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. All the stars are kind of pointing to each other, right? See Newark uh, try to come out with a Finger Lakes East title. There's nothing, though, that Coach Bill Thompson would like better than to play spoiler in that situation. Oh, yeah. I mean, these Finger Lakes East teams have developed such a rivalry um, over the past several years. Uh, you know, a lot of the coach, like Bill Thompson's been at Wayne for – Jeez, I don't know how long now, 10, 12 years at least. Uh, Henry Cooperis has now been at Newark for, I think this is his fifth season, fourth or fifth season. Um, and Trevor Sanders doing a great job at Pell Mac. So to me, uh, and then you, you added Marcus Whitman into the mix too, uh, into the East as a former right. West team and Coach O'Connor. There's just great coaches in this league. So uh, it just adds to it. But great. Right. I'll be looking forward to. Watching the games tonight on the Pal Mac YouTube, we'll have you on the call, and then I'll also have on another screen that Newark Wayne game up, and we'll see who wins the Finger Lakes East tonight. Well, we got a third screen for the Syracuse uh, Orange basketball team. Yeah, and then then uh, that'll be on the TV. So I got the <laughs> monitor screen, and then the so yeah, there'll be a lot going on while I'm oh. drinking my coffee at 7:30 to tonight. <laughs> I love it, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So reminder: 7:30 tonight, Pal Mac Athletics YouTube, like you said, Jim. I'll be on with one of the students over there from Pal Mac. I'm really looking forward to that and to getting back over there. It's been a few weeks since I was there. A lot of fun there. Production's awesome. Really, really cool. So, yep. we'll begin there tonight. Yep. And then Syracuse, what time's that tip? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. NC State in the Dome. Mm -hmm. Last chance for a quad one win. 
Yeah, you're right. Uh, but they got Pitt again, though, but that would not, not I, be a quad one. I don't one. think that's quad one. Is Pitt, that quad one, Paul? Pitt's fallen down to quad two. Yeah. And then Duke on Saturday night, but that, they're not in quad one anymore. Right. The ACC as a whole is kind of bleh. Yeah, UNC lost again last night. Yeah, I know. Um, so, yeah, definitely weird. Yeah, it's just not a very well-run conference. Jim has opinion. opinions. I'm not a fan, a fan of John Swafford and everything that played out in conference realignment. And now you got um, Texas and Oklahoma coming to the SEC a year right. early in 2024. And and then you have UCLA and USC coming to the Big Ten. And so ACC has not been competitive other than a top team in football like Clemson. Uh, you know, and then maybe a, a one or two off top team in basketball, but it has right. not been a dominant conference that it was sold to be when they expanded. When yeah, everybody Duke expanded. and North Carolina have had some pretty, some solid success. In college yeah, of basketball. course, that's all that matters in basketball. Right, is Duke Carolina in that conference, in my opinion. So that, and that's one of the reasons why they struggle. I think is and competitively nationally, I don't think they can in basketball hold a candle to um, the Big Ten. In recent years, other than having maybe a, a one or two top teams each year, but I don't know. That's a story for another show. <laughs> but um, anything else going on in the world of sports? Um, I don't think so. We're just still talking about that, you know, that Super Bowl from Sunday, and just to an ups, a kind of an upsetting ending, in my opinion, with that penalty call. Wow, the Eagles taking the high road though when they're yes, talking they about that play, that call did not influence the outcome. And there's so many plays in the game, yada yada yada. Right. Even Bradbury said, you know, I held him. You know, I grabbed yeah. his jersey. So, yeah, taking the high road, including head coach of the Eagles, who you don't like, Rebecca, well, Nick Sirianni, he also took the high road. He took the high road? Yep. Oh, yeah. Do he, I need to rethink my thoughts about that guy? I'm not saying either way whether okay. you should or not. That's a totally up to you. That's personal preference. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, so maybe, yeah, maybe they're not that bad, but it's not.